what's up guys it's Kenyo here um, doing some cold calling of businesses and um, <sighs> let me tell you guys cold calling it's not my expertise it's not my uh, amuse-bouche as it were <laughs> I just like the word amuse-bouche but um let's see it's a little dark yeah, one second <laughs> But um, yeah, I'm learning a ton though. You know, I, I literally, you know, if you look at my other videos, I've been doing this entrepreneur stuff for like five years. I've literally never done bulk cold calling. And um, I've suffered for it, definitely in business, because it's like, yeah, branding is great, and um, but it's more long term. Um, and you know, it's it's kind of interesting. It just depends on how you do stuff. But anyway, I'm getting into the cold calling because uh, mostly because I didn't want to go outside. So I was like, what can I what can I do that is working from home? Because um, I do love driving. I like I like um, being out on the road, and you know, I could visit businesses and I could um, do different driving things. But sometimes your your body's actually tired, and so I was like, all right. One day a week, usually, um, I need to be working, but I don't want to go out. And I know a lot of people are working from home right now, so I shouldn't even be complaining. But I was like, all right, let me figure out this whole work from home thing. Ooh, I mean, I've definitely worked from home many times in my life. But um, as far as generating income, usually it's it's income that's already been generated, like working on a website, working on a video that I already sold via an event or something like that. And I'm like, events are shut down. Um, and I had some stuff planned, let me tell you. And I had some new customers coming for this, this COVID poop came about. It's actually, you know, we really, as human beings, we give nature a lot of crap. We destroy it with our dumbness, our dumb smartness. We're smart enough to know that we like electricity, but not know how to do it without destroying everything that we need to live on the planet. And um, we're like, hey, hurricanes, oh my gosh, another hurricane. And then, you know, even for the religious people to be like, God, destroy this hurricane. And God's like, you mean my sprinkler system? I came up with that so that I could find a way to get water in the land. It kind of, it's part of the whole thing that I'm doing here. I could shut it down for you, but the long-term consequences for the planet could still end up in you dying. So, <laughs> and then, you know, stuff like COVID, it's like, oh, What's going on? It's like, well, I mean, you basically know nothing about how your body works, but you do know that you're made up of cells, which is what you call a dumb name. Um, anyway, this is really part of the technology that I use. One of the foundational building blocks. I know you guys might call it a, a pandemic, as it were. Um, and I do call it that too, because to be honest, I care about you guys. I just care about you guys. I really do. Um, but that's why I dropped you the info on masks. Are you guys doing the mask thing? I, I, I dropped some info on masks. Are you guys, did anyone get that memo? Anyway, so cold calling. Um, also, I invented, uh, you guys know that I'm working on a time machine. See, the thing is, actually, humans have been inventing time machines for basically as long as we've been around. Books, um, computers. So what's the next version of that? What's the next iPhones? What's the next time machine? Well, 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 I'm glad that you ask. <laughs> so I made two proto... Well, I did a sketch on a piece of paper that I... Not locate, or else I would locate and break down. 
for you, but um, anyway, don't know where that is. Um, and then I also made a sketch in Canva, which maybe I'll throw up right here. It'll probably be where my hand is right now, so you won't really be able to see my hand. Anyway, so um, basically, we are traveling through time. And uh, if you guys watched my last video, I, I, I did some research and stuff like that and was talking about how we're always traveling through time. Um, nothing new that I hadn't read, but it did spark a little bit of something today when I was thinking about the new invention that I had made, the prototype um, for the for the time machine that I had sketched. And I said, you know, we're actually already traveling through time. <laughs> the issue um, is that we want to have more dynamic control over said travel through time. Just like if someone was like, oh, I made a space machine, you'd be like, what's a space machine? And you'd be like, oh, it helps you travel through space. And you'd be like, you mean walking to the bathroom? And then you'd be like, yes, they're called shoes. Telemarketer, excellent. I sort of recognize that number, but anyway. Uh, I, I can't hate on telemarketers anymore because I'm a telemarketer. Today I've been telemarketing. Which is also an aspect of Time Machine, which I talked about in my last video. Some people aren't seeing the connection. Um, but anyway. With my new prototype of Time Machine, hopefully you'll understand. It's basically just a new way to interact with time. Which uses, you know, data storage as a fuel. Um, and so, um, yeah, so basically there's a hood that goes over you, which, um, you know, projects your, projects into the hood and that takes care of everything that you're seeing on the 360, uh, sort of thing, except for the ground. And then, um, you're sitting in a chair because it, it's basically, it's a time car. That's what I call it, actually. I just made that name earlier today. I was like... This is a time car V1. So you sit in a chair, you put your hands inside of basically gloves or a little um, um, gummy, gum, gum type thing. You put your feet in the same thing too. Um, later models, the gum, it's just for input, input and then um, texture feel. Uh, it'll be electrified and uh, it'll be ordered so that it'll be able to firm up. Um, why gum? Why putting it into a gel? Um, because based on where technology is at, I think that might be the best input that I can understand, at least. So put put your hand in the gel, um, feet in the in the inputs, um, put your shoes, shoe gel, a shoe and gel, um, shoe gel pedals, shettles. Had to come up with a new name. Look at that. Shettles. Put your feet in the shettles. Um, there's going to be a PC, which is doing all your processing. Separate data storage. Um, there's going to be a scent machine. Seems pretty basic, but um, scent is more of our ability to detect atmospheric changes than anything else. And it's very important. The gas that is going on around us is very important. To what we do um, and smells you know are very much like things that we see we, we see through our nose we just see the atmosphere we see what's going on someone's cooking bacon behind me not really but if they were i wouldn't have to turn around to know it i'd be using these guys so it's very important to understand these guys are important um speakers i didn't have that in the prototype but there will be of course um, audio outputs. Um, and then there's also going to be a microphone and a camera mounted separately because um, the uh, the experience of what's going on inside the time machine is integral for the function of the time machine. So what this will be essentially creating will be a, another sub dimension. So um, Kind of like the internet, you know, the internet's a sub-dimension, it's a whole universe in which things can exist, uh, and, you know, you can live on the internet, really, and just, not really, because we had all this stuff, bodies, and 
hearts. It's the mix. Anyway, um, so that's that's roughly the prototype. Is there anything else that I'm missing? Data storage, same thing, projector. Nope, that's all of it. Anyway, so cold calling and inventing time machines, time cars. That's what I'm up to. No, a time train might be more um, profitable in the beginning. Though that is essentially what theaters are. Think about movie theaters. The problem with movie theaters, very few. They used to do this thing actually years ago. I don't know how many of them do it now, but there would be um, input devices on each chair in the theater. You know, film, film, the ex film, what we call film is very interesting because it's not exactly the same thing as a video or movies. The film is more, mm, it exists contextually in the idea of theaters as well. Um, so without a theater, you can't really have a film. And what does that tell you about the necessity of inputs? And, you know, it's fascinating. Most of the inputs that we experience from films actually was well, augmented by the audience. So video is great, um, but the augmentation of it is necessary for it to transcend and become something else, which is why the... the, the the, the streaming thing has a couple hurdles, not infinite hurdles. It's already existing very well. We have something called social media. People can talk about things. They can watch reaction videos at the wazoo. Um, I actually think reaction videos are going to develop into something far more profound than what we're seeing on YouTube. In the year 2020. Um, but anyway, anyway, it is a pleasure to talk to you guys about the, the steps that I'm going on in, in my distressed, one thing you'll notice if you look back through all my videos, and I would do a montage if I had it in me, so on my neck, I need a whole new fleet of shirts, I'm gonna have to get rid of all my shirts and get a brand new set of shirts. Speaking of which, time suits <laughs> to be continued. Time suits. <laughs>